Okay, welcome back. Uh, four points lower, absolutely flat. Eighteen four seventeen. All right. All while you were chilling in the break, but uh, we'll give Prashant a minute to fix that. For now, the market is absolutely at the flat line, just around five points in the red. It is the mid-cap index, which is holding well with a gain of 1%. So uh, let's invite our market guest for the day. We have Sunil Subramaniam, MD and CEO of Sundara Mutual Fund, who joins us right now. Sunil, good morning and thanks a lot for joining us. This is Pavitra. Uh, you know, first, on your outlook on just where the markets could be headed, we've seen that slow and steady rise to pretty much the all-time highs. But where do you think it's likely to go from here? And this decoupling that we have been talking about for so long uh, from the rest of the world, do you think that's likely to continue for a while? Yes, I do think the decoupling will continue. But that way, I expect the markets to be a little bit sideways from now on because there has been a good lot of run-up on discounting the future uh, gains to... Uh, India from a recessionary world where oil prices will crash and the fact that, uh, you know, uh, dollar will likely to weaken with an interest rate cycle peaking somewhere in March. So I think to that extent, those are positive news for an FII from India perspective. But that I would say that over the next two months, there are two, three key things to watch for. First is from a global perspective, we still have to see whether the oncoming slowdown is really factored in because that's where the interest rate hikes will be seen to be paused. So I would encourage everybody to wait for at least one or two more Fed commentaries from the rate hikes scenario to make up their mind. Second is that uh, oil uh, will likely to be holed up till February, March because of the winter heating uh, requirement. The demand for oil will continue to be strong and hence a further correction in oil prices significantly, right? Probably to wait for a couple of months for the winter to be over before we do that because the Russian price cap, uh, which the US has proposed, is still Europe is divided on that, and Russia has already been selling oil at prices below that cap. So whether it's really going to have the effect that the U.S. intended in terms of economically trying to bring Russia down uh, is to be waited and seen. Similarly, from the Indian point of view, we all know that the big budget, the, the last pre-election tinted budget is due in 1st of February. So a lot of run-up and hype around that uh, will mean that there will be some amount of volatility. So I would expect a phase of consolidation now to set in over the next couple of months. But that being said, the undertone of the market will be bullish. There will be buying support at every correction because of the strong SIP flows domestically. And hence, I don't expect a great crash, but I do expect a sideways consolidating market over the next two to three months till we get fresh direction uh, on oil as well as on the budget. So basically, uh, the market stays here sideways without any great momentum, Sunil, right? Uh, all the, uh, I mean, into, right. into the next couple of months, maybe, even. Yes, because, see, there is enough liquidity. See, if you look, uh, uh, Prashant, between October to June, when the oil prices went up and there was panic, we, I think, two and a half lakh crores of money went out of India. From post-July, when the rate hikes have been confirmed and you have the correcting oil prices, uh, you've seen about 80,000 crores of that come back. There's still about 1.7 lakh crore of money which went out of India, potentially in the short term could come back. But like I said, it'll wait for fresh direction. All right, uh, got that. Sunil, but within this space, I know that you like the banking space and some of the consumer discretionary names as well. So take us through on just the banks. How do you expect this pack to trend? Of course, we've seen the momentum build up, especially in the PSU bank space. Do you think that is likely to continue? Absolutely. Because, you see, uh, if you look at the Indian growth path, it's a CapEx-driven growth path. And for CapEx, uh, bank financing is about 70% of a total project cost. And the fact is that in the CapEx cycle, they are not so rate sensitive because initially the interest cost tends to get capitalized in the project cost. So hence, banks make very good spreads. And as you know, on the rate hike cycle, banks have only passed on about 30 to 35 basis points on an average uh, to deposits, but have increased loan rates by over 100 basis points. So net interest margins of banks are set to you know, widen. The second aspect is that you mentioned PSU banks, because PSU banks are more corporate loan centric, right? In the past four or five years, it's been retail which has dominated the bank lending, whatever there was. But in the coming, I would say a more healthy balance between retail and corporate lending and PSU banks tend to have an advantage because of their nature of the relationship, especially with the MSME sector. The third aspect is that uh, in 
this period of uh, a U-shaped recovery in the credit side, I think the NPA cycle has also eased up. So there's a lot of provisioning, excess provisioning made by banks during the COVID phase, which will have the ability to get written back to PNLs. So there'll be a lot of stability to bank earnings because wherever there's a quarter where they feel that it's not so great, they'll have the ability to write back some provision to maintain a consistent EPS growth path. So overall, I think that while some banks have been discounted a lot more in terms of the future growth potential, it's a quite a wide variation in price to book between various banks. And there's a lot of scope for money to be made in, in the overall banking and financial services space. And I'd like to include the fact of uh, good quality NBFCs also participating in this uh, good growth momentum. You know, we should pull up the graphics on the, uh, the Castrol news, which was flashing earlier for a brief bit. Uh, Castrol is basically putting money into something called Key Mobility, which is a TVS group company. And I think the size of the investment is sizable. Just under 500 shows uh, is what uh, I did see that. We'll have the graphics up, which uh, should confirm that. Now, Key Mobility, which is part of TVS Automobile Solutions Private Limited, uh, you know, calls itself India's largest independent automotive aftermarket player. Uh, and uh, it's got it's got other investors like Chris Gopalakrishnan, who was, uh, you know, the ex-CEO of one of the founders of uh, Infosys, amongst others. Uh, from what I can understand, it seems to be like a full-stack online to offline uh, garage aggregator. I mean, uh, you know, bringing uh, workshops around the country together under a single platform on a digital platform. Uh, so this is interesting. Uh, Castrol as a stock has uh, seen a huge amount of underperformance, uh, uh, you know, along with other names in the space like Gulf Oil, etc. Castrol, of course, is the leader, uh, but it's not done anything uh, for, for a few years now. Uh, so this is an interesting development. We'll try and have the management uh, speak to us about this in terms of what the strategy, etc. is. There you go, 490 crores. They've picked up a 7% stake in uh, key mobility for four, uh, 487 crores. That's a sizable sum, sizable investment. Uh, coming through from uh, Castrol India. Uh, so that's, uh, that's news flow in that sense. Uh, Sunil, apart from banks, financial services, what else uh, is your team bullish on? I think uh, consumer discretionary, especially auto, uh, we continue to maintain the fact that auto is going to see a growth from all three components of its business. The rural-oriented uh, two-wheeler demand, the rural-oriented tractor demand, which is already showing V-shaped recovery. So rural demand with on the back of a good Kharif and then expected good Rabi crop, sowing has already been very good. So rural demand should give support to both tractors and to uh, two-wheelers. At the same time, in the, in the cars, I think we've had the fact that there's been a supply crunch which has meant that the waiting periods for auto is very long. So if you look at the sales uh, path, right, we expect a strong recovery along that, along with margins, because when we're talking about commodity prices declining, auto is one of the key users of oil-related derivative and commodities, whether it's in steel and whether it's in paints or it's in auto components. So I think there will be positive margin upside on that, that part of the business. The third part is the, you mentioned about the logistics and transportation. So the vehicle, both medium and heavy and light commercial vehicle are in a strong cyclical upswing. So we think that all sets of, the only part of auto which is a little bit uh, under pressure would be the auto components which is export oriented because in a world, in a recessionary world, exports. So leaving that apart, I think the rest of the auto pack, we are very, very bullish in terms of the coming uh, years. The second aspect uh, that again continues to be housing and real estate within the consumer discretionary space because uh, we don't see that even with the 100 basis points rise in home loan rates, uh, still housing is still, you know, from a borrowing perspective, probably affordability perspective at about a two and a half decade low. And so that pressure on the you know, new sales is going up, new uh, say, uh, the, uh, launches are going up. So housing continues to be a medium term story, which should have a spillover on the rest of the economy. The third aspect is the industrial SPAC, right? Where uh, with, with all this government capex continuing, as you saw, the government's half year fiscal deficit are only at 37% of the full year. So the government's capacity to spend for the second half of the year is significantly enhanced. And in the run up to the budget with the budgetary announcements around infra likely to continue, we think overall industrials as a pack because there's also the PLI driven capex, uh, uh, especially in electronics and chemicals and that which is coming through. So, and over the medium term, maybe in a year, year and a half, private capex should be up and roaring. So I think industrials as a bet, slightly with a longer term perspective is another thing as a house we are bullish on. 
All right, got it. Sunil, it's always a pleasure to have you here on the channel. So thank you very much for stopping by and speaking to us. We'll leave it at that today. Uh, with that, it's time for us to get into a break. But before that, CNBC TV 18 is all set to lead charge with a one-of-a-kind mega initiative, Future Female Forward, the Women's Collective presented by HSBC. Now, before we